Sometimes they ask you to draw a picture of the curve. Um, this one, you don't you don't need to do that, but it might help with the the approximation estimate. Uh, the first thing you need is delta x, which is b minus a over n, uh, three minus zero over six. Those are six uh, places, so that's one half. And then you you need the the rule. Um, the trapezoid rule is delta x, and then it's it's the the endpoint, the left endpoint plus two times the like interior ones plus the right endpoint. And this isn't like the correct. This isn't like the the you know official formula that's in a book, but it's it's a little tough to write for you though. It's 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 one half because that's delta x f of zero plus two times. And then you, you add delta x to the zero. So f of one half plus two times f of, you add another one half, one, plus two times f of three halves, plus, let's go on to this next line here, two times f of two, plus two times f of five halves, plus f of three. So you gotta get all the way up to that right end point the right end point and the left end point, they're counted once. All the interior ones are counted twice. And then in terms of actually getting the value, so we're, we're talking about the function x squared. Yeah, that's right. So you can write zero squared plus two times one half squared and so on here. This one is doable by hand. That's probably why the instructor picked it. It's got, I mean, you get some issues with fractions, but... Um, they're all they're all denominator four, so it's it's uh, you know it's not the not the worst worst one I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, so something something like this would be uh, be okay. Right. Um, you don't need to solve all that out. Yeah, Can you just give me thirty seconds here, please. I'll be right back with you. Okay. All right, I'm back. So that that, that takes care of the uh, the trapezoid approximation. Now, in terms of the, the the way, I guess you'd figure out whether it's an estimate or not. The uh, the curve of x squared from zero to three. Uh, if you look at the if you draw kind of like a, a trapezoid here, question is does the does it come under or does it come over? And I believe it actually comes over. Um, like like it's, it's kind of like if, if, it's, if it's over this this is the trapezoid that's being drawn so i believe it's an overestimate and that that comes from the fact that it's concave up the uh the function there i remember that sounds familiar okay so in, in terms of overestimate and underestimate it depends on concavity that's kind of your can look at that later. Okay, uh, on to number two. Yep. All right. This got... All right, it's number two. Lots of lots of parts to this one. Um, did you do? If you have your old test, you might go back and see like what what kinds of questions were were chosen on this one. So. Uh, so if u if u is cosecant of x in this integral, then uh, du derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant x cotangent x dx. And the instructor, I think the instructor is saying here, like do a u substitution on this uh, problem, which uh, the um, 
Uh, next, so the next step here is to actually go back to the integral and replace. So u, u is cosecant to the fourth, um, and then dx, if your solves for dx, dx du over minus cosecant x cotangent x. So you have du, sorry, we have a cotangent in there, cotangent x, and then du instead of dx over minus cosecant x cotangent x. And you can see the cotangents cancel. You're like, well, what about that cosecant x? Well, that, that's actually the u. So you can you can sort of further substitute in here. It's really u to the fourth du over minus u. That produces integral minus u cubed du. So the, the instructor's probably saying like, hey, there's options here when you do this one. So let's do it with option B. Option B is now, and let me go rewrite the integral. It's integral cosecant to the fourth x cotangent x dx. So your your du here, your, your derivative of, cos, of cotangent x is uh, minus cosecant squared x dx. Okay, so we go uh, we go here and we say okay, it's um, we've got the integral of cosecant fourth x u, and then dx is really du over minus cosecant squared x. Hmm. I'm not sure where this one's going. This doesn't look like it's great at the beginning because only only two of them cancel. So you have minus cosecant squared x u du. So the problem here is that is that you've got both x and u. Um, you, I believe, you had solutions to these. I don't know if you, yeah. know if you get the ability to pull one of them up, uh, maybe, and uh, yeah, let me know what what the instructor had here in mind. Because the next step is to go like u squared equals cotangent squared x, and then cotangent squared plus one is cosecant squared. So that's a trig thing. Cotangent squared x plus one equals cosecant squared x. So you could you could change this to cosecant squared x minus one like this. Uh, actually, we want. I'm sorry. We want cosecant squared. So we would want cosecant squared x to equal u squared plus one, and that would become right in here. We go u squared plus one u du. Um, Put that minus out here, so it's integral u cubed plus u du. Um, I would just I would just verify that before going much further. Um, the answer <clears throat> the answer she gets is uh, oh wait actually no. Uh, I guess what I'm asking you to do is check to see that this this substitution was yeah you got further it. incorporated. Okay, because uh, it's pretty non-obvious that this is a this is a um, Pag Pythagorean identity. It's the third one, so it's not really that well known. Okay. I mean, it's kind of an interesting problem, but it's it's, it's a, there's a lot to, that like seems like it's very specific. So. Yeah. Part C, part C here. Rewriting the integral in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, so the, the idea there is, is that you're gonna maybe see some substitutions or some cancellations once you, once you make the substitution. So cosecant is one over sine four X. Cotangent is cosine X over sine x okay <laughs> i'm wrong there are no cancellations here uh, so this becomes the integral of cosine x over sine 5x dx and so now you have to make a u your u is usually the one with the higher power so in this case be sine x du is cosine x dx and uh, when you go back and sub in here, you got 
a cosine x over u to the fifth. dx is really du over cosine x. So you see that they do cancel, which is nice. Let's see those go away. And you end up getting a one over u to the fifth, which can be rewritten using power rule, or I'm sorry, using exponent rules as u to the minus five du. And just integrate from there. In all these cases, remember to back substitute. Your answer is not in terms of, of u, it's in terms mm -hmm. of, of x. Right. right. So in terms of these three like choices, would you say this one's the easiest? Uh, uh, I think A is the easiest because it, it like it once you do it, you get down to the nicest, cleanest okay. thing right away. All right. um, a is probably truly the U sub that you need to know. B and C are more uh, more of a teaching tool than anything else. Mm -hmm. right. um, the next thing, next three is kind of a calculator problem. It looks like are you are you using calculators off much? Uh uh. Um, I doubt we'll be doing a question like that on the exam. Yeah, so the the forward velocity, what they're asking for is the integral of this thing. Oh, it's, yeah, it's it's kinda, this <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a variation on kind of part C of number two. Uh -huh. So, um, so number four, four is kind of like one. It's just a different, a different type of rectangle or, or geometric shape that you're using to estimate area. Uh, so the uh, this time there's eight rectangles, and your delta x is still b minus a over n three minus one over eight, which is one fourth. Okay, so you're you're um, you're using right and left endpoint. So what I what I always suggest here is you start with your left endpoint and actually write out um, the 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 increments so that you can see which ones you're using. Uh, you're going up by a fourth. That's why it's five fourths. It is six fourths, but that's three halves, seven fourths, uh, two, uh, then that's nine fourths. Five halves, uh, ten fourths, eleven fourths, let's see, thirteen fourths, and then three. No, we did get three. Okay, this is three. Yeah. Okay. So your 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 left endpoint will use these. Do that in red here. So your left is delta x times f of one plus f of five fourths plus dot 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 f of eleven fourths. Mm -hmm. And then your right, it uses the these over here. Right, it's still delta x one fourth f of five fourths plus f of three halves plus dot 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 f of three. And then you get the numbers. Okay. okay. Now, in terms of over and under estimate, you got to have that, that shape. You got to kind of know what it looks like. So one over x looks like this. So you can see for a left, when you're using the left endpoints, that your rectangle is going to go over it. <clears throat> so the, the left one will be an over. I should have done that in red. The uh, the blue ones though, where it hits it, it's going to be under each time. It and it has to do with concavity. Okay. Like it's 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 totally all about concavity. Mm -hmm. It's uh, in this these types of samples. So the the R will be an under. Um, You'll notice the left is much larger than the right, but that's not really a good enough reason, but it probably would work uh, to, to, to justify why it's a, 
an over or an underestimate. Okay. All righty. All right. So five on a five year. I would consider five a good exam question. Um, it's not too difficult. Um, right. It has the appearance of being maybe more difficult than it actually is. Um, it's got some definite integrals. You get a number. Um, I think one of the things here is you've been doing so much integration is you forget that this is a variant. This is a variant on u to the minus one half. Like this right. x minus four is is to the one half power, but when you bring it up, it's mm -hmm. minus one half. So it's 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 just a power rule integral. It's just okay. Add one to the exponent. Put the new exponent in front and evaluate from four to seven. So this is two square root x minus four evaluated from four to seven. It's two square root of three minus two square root of zero. It's just two square root of three. That was easy. So interestingly, all of a sudden, uh, it moves to a much more difficult problem <laughs> uh, because yeah, I don't know why. So, and this is this was the challenge when you were taking this part in this part of the course. Exam one was: Can you identify what type of integral it is? Right. And uh, boy, the, you know, the instructor really didn't do you much. This one's this one's a very difficult variation on integration by parts. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, so is. Uh, 13, I guess, isn't um, 15 is an integration by parts. I don't know if you're looking at it. That's kind of a, the, the, like the fact that this is e to a negative makes it too more difficult. The fact that it's a squared means you have to do it uh, twice. Um, mm -hmm. And we can do it. It's just, it's just that it's, and it's definite integral. So you got to value. It's just a lot going on here. So just mm -hmm. keep that in mind. It's okay. So your, your, your integration by parts is uv minus integral v du. Here, your u is the polynomial, and your dv is the e. It must be this way. All right, so we have du. du is 4x minus 1. And our v, when you integrate, that's this is one of the problems is, is you have minus e to the minus x this time, just adds a little more. Mm -hmm. Struggle to so you've got uv 2x squared minus x plus one times minus e to the minus x. But now because it's definite integral, you have to value it from zero to one. Now you could wait until the end to do that, uh, but you gotta at least you know make a note of it here. Minus integral v minus e to the minus x d. Oh yeah, it's dx. 4x minus one dx. Okay, and this is from zero to one also. All right, so I'm not gonna evaluate this on the left, but um, I, what I'm gonna do is take this negative and go with that negative. I'm just gonna slightly rewrite it. So it's plus integral zero to one. Better to put the polynomial first like this, and then you do your integration by parts again. So this time u is the polynomial. Again, du is four dx, dv is e to the minus x dx. So your v is minus e to the minus x. And you write that uv minus integral v du. So you get uh, uh, 4x minus 1 minus e to the minus x. Again, that's evaluated from 0 to 1 minus the integral v du minus e to the minus x. 4dx evaluated from 0 to 1. So the next thing here is these two negatives combine, if you want, becomes plus integral zero to one, e to the minus x, the four out in front. So it's antiderivative, no more integration by parts. It's just an e, it becomes minus four e to the minus x. And then you bring all this other stuff down, four x minus one. Uh, actually, so like, see this negative right here? I think that mm -hmm. does, eh. yeah. So this, this kind of doesn't matter. Let's. Let's put, let's assign it to, let's assign it in here. Um, 
So it becomes one minus four X E tennis X. Then I go back up here and I grab this one. It's kind of the same problem. You got that, you got that negative. So I'm gonna assign it to all the other terms. Do that here. Is that a plus? It became a plus, okay. So easy to miss signs here also. So this becomes, let's move this up. This becomes uh, one, I'm sorry, it becomes two minus two X squared plus X minus one E to the minus X. And you're valuing all this from zero to, to minus one. The reason I did all this is because you can actually factor out an E to the minus X out of everything. And then you get all these potential terms you can combine minus two X squared plus X minus one plus one minus four X minus four. And this could make it slightly easier. So like this interior becomes uh, minus three X minus four, and then your value from zero to one. So e to the minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus e to the zero, and then all of those are zero. So it looks like you get, you get four, and this is minus five, nine, and it could be a mistake, minus nine over e. You're all done. You can see quite a bit of effort. You know, you're not right. you're not exactly uh, you're not exactly getting there. So it, I wouldn't necessarily practice this problem again. I would maybe uh -huh. make it lighter, a lighter version, and see if. So whatever, if there's a um, x product in a problem like like a integration by parts problem, it, would that tell you the amount of times you're going to do um, integration power on it? Yeah, the power does. And when it's of this type, okay. this type definitely uh, definitely has that issue. So um, right. give me just 30 seconds here again. Catch All right. my, uh, Okay, so seven. Seven is somewhat like two, where there's potentially a substitution that you can make that's, you know, kind of ideal. Um, but the problem is, is that you, uh, you, you don't have like matching tr trig functions like like sine goes with cosine, uh, cotangent goes with cosecant, you know, so on. Um, cosecant is really cosine over sine. So that's that that's maybe why the instructor had to do part C of that earlier problem because this becomes integral cosine cubed x one over sine x dx. And so the reason that's that's potentially useful here is it's cosine cubed x over sine x, and now you get that pairing, that sine cosine pairing. So if you make u cosine x, du is minus sine x dx. Does that help here? Maybe this doesn't help. Um, yeah, it's not looking great. Because if we make this u cubed, yeah. So the issue with what I just did is, yeah, it becomes u cubed, but you get you get du over now it'll be minus sine squared x, and then you'd have to do something with this, which could be okay. So my guess is the instructor didn't do any of this. So let me start fresh. They probably. Oh boy, um, that's a good question. What did they do? So we could have made, we could have made um, the U sine X, which is kind of non-obvious. So your DU is cosine X 
dx. And, and this is better, you'll see in a moment here, it's cosine cubed x over u, dx is du over cosine x. So the reason that's better is one of those cancels. You have cosine squared x over u du. And when you go back up here with uh, this u right here, you can make u squared equal to sine squared x. And then uh, there's that trig identity, the one that says sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. So cosine squared x is one minus sine squared x. Um, so I don't wanna say like, like imagine putting this right here. So it's mm -hmm. u squared plus uh, cosine squared x equals one. To get to cosine squared x, it's one minus u squared on the top. And the reason that's better is because now you can divide each of these by u and integrate. Now, would you have seen to do all that? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's there's a lot going on here. Yeah, how do you make the decision on what you want your u to be? Well, you get a feel. Um, it's rare when it's the numerator, which is what I tried first. I tried the numerator first and that didn't work. Um, if you go back to the question we did earlier, you can see here we made it the denominator, which is mm -hmm. or the part of the denominator. That's gen generally the strategy. It's usually okay. the one to the higher power. Um, it's a little bit like a puzzle. I mean, it's not right. You know, it's not. It's not as simple as just yeah. You know, here here you go. Um, mm -hmm. and, don't, and don't forget to back substitute either. I mean, in some ways, they, they they might they maybe should tell you like, hey, this is a, um, but that's kind of what they're testing is like, do you know how to how to do this? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Sorry, I mean, I wish I could be more helpful. If if I were giving the exam, I might might tell you, you know, what to do. Yeah. Right. So evaluate the following integral using two different methods. Um, rather than that, uh, I know it's still early in the day, uh, but uh, anything stand out to you here? What what do you see that might might make uh, this uh, doable? Integration of parts. Okay, uh, I would <laughs> not go down that road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you see that's integration? What do you see that's integration by parts here? Can you just Maybe help me out here to try to understand where that was coming well, from. Well, I just see that's two different functions. Two different or, functions. Okay. So, so, but never go like, like integration by parts is kind of like quadratic formula. Like, like maybe it works for everything kind of, but like you want to try your, your U subs first. Okay. And do you see something whose derivative is already in, in there? Like, like you just said, when you separate the functions, like, what do you see? Well, I see one of them, their derivative will be one. Right, right. So the 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 uh, prefer preference, my preference would be du, 2x here, dx. And then when you integrate, it's x squared u, uh, du over 2x. And you get a nice, you get a nice cancellation there. Yeah. So the, the reason the instructions is two different methods is, is this is method one. Method two is actually uh, probably some sort of trig substitution, which you really don't want to do if you don't have to. I mean, they're, right. they're it's tough. It's uh, really not preferred. Yeah, um, actually, I need to practice on those because I had, had a hard time doing those. It, it's it's not uncommon to do what you did, which is try to make it more, more complicated than it actually is when it, especially yeah. when you've learned all these methods, because uh, so, mm -hmm. you're you're not used to seeing something about it. Um, like for example, nine. Nine is. Let's look at it. Like when, when I look at nine, I'm like, oh, the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. 
that tells me something. It, you should also notice that neither of the derivatives at the top or the bottom like equal itself. Integration by parts is generally reserved for like sine, cosine E, ln, some polynomials, but they're usually mixed with that. So mm -hmm. then the next kind of like down the list here is, is partial fractions. And that's that's what I would hope you would you would glean from this. You'd say, okay, yeah, I, I get it. That's that's partial fractions. Is there a way just by telling into like would uh, uh, looking at the the power would those give anything away? Not really, because it's it's uh, it's it, it, well, just the fact that like one isn't. The derivative of the other like if you take a derivative of, of this mm -hmm. although i mean there, there's yeah so yeah it, it, this one like if you were to take the derivative of the top which is which is unusual it's 5x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus one that that's just not a derivative of the bottom is 2x it's just not they're just right. not like multipliers or squares even or anything anything of each other um, right. um so that leads you to like, oh, there's not much, not much you can do here. Now, I don't, I don't, I think this one's pretty intense for a final exam kind of question, because uh, you do have to do the following here, which is divide, and uh, you have to remember to put in the coefficients that are missing. I mean, there's a oh, lot of like ways yeah, that, this, that this that this could go wrong. Um, I mean, I work with with students that. In pre or, you know, algebra two that are doing learning partial fractions, they, you know, this is hard for them to even remember. So we, we don't want to, I mean, yeah, I, this is probably, you know, out of scope, but mm -hmm. uh, this is the path here. Um, okay. So let's just carry, carry this for just maybe a tiny bit here. So we get X cubed there, and then uh, you end up bringing all of these down. So that's uh, plus. This x, you got to put it in the right place. X cubed plus x. Ooh, this one worked out nicely. Wow, I wouldn't have expected that. Um, well, that's interesting. So maybe that is why your instructor gave you this. So the, the answer, this is the quotient. There, there's a remainder of zero, and this is your divisor. Your answer is always written as quotient plus remainder over divisor. So here you get x cubed plus x. That was that, that line up here at the top. Your remainder is 0 over, what was it, x squared plus 1. So you don't, you don't write this part on the right. but So it becomes the integral x cubed plus x um, from 1 to 2. You don't and write this part on the right because it's 0 on it. Yeah, you don't have to write it. Okay. But nor like normally you would. Normally it would be like, and this, yeah, like, let's just say, yeah, uh, let's just say it was like four over x squared plus one. Well, this is arc tangent. This would be four ten inverse of x right. when you like it's it's like a it's a reasonable one to do mm -hmm. if the instructor. So I take back what I said. You probably should work through a problem like this. Um, mm -hmm. The other variation on this problem is like setting up the integral like doing the partial fractions mm -hmm. and then just setting it up but not actually doing it and uh you know that could be could be uh, there mm -hmm. um sorry again i just i need 30 seconds here i'm just oh, good. be right back All right, I'm back. Um, yeah, maybe maybe look at your exam. Well, 10 is another partial fractions, maybe. Uh, I'm gonna move to 12. Would be a better, better use of our efforts here.
All right, evaluate the following integral, natural log of x, x to the fourth. Um, this has the appearance of possibly u sub because the derivative of natural log of x is one over x, but it doesn't completely cancel. You still with me, Trenton? Oh yeah, sorry, I was okay. Oh. No problem, no problem. Um, so the problem with this is that is that you're gonna you'll you'll end up like not everything, not all the x's go away. And, and if if you can't see that, work work it out later. If you rewrite this though as x to the minus fourth natural log of x, it has the appearance of integration by parts, uh, where your u is natural log of x and du is one over x, but your dv is x to the minus fourth dx. You'll see why in a moment here. Um, v ends up being minus uh, x to the minus three over, I'm sorry, x to the minus three over minus three, get rid of that. Okay, so your, your uv minus integral v du is, uh, is the natural log of x times x x to the minus three over minus three minus integral of v du so this is the x to the minus three over minus three times one over x and there's supposed to be a dx there it looks bad it doesn't look great here um, we'll just rewrite this first part negative one third from the minus three in the bottom natural log of x and then this this goes down to the bottom it's really x cubed on the bottom these two negatives go together plus one third. This is one over x cubed, one over x. So that's one over x to the fourth dx. And you can see it works out nicely because you, you can integrate this. We actually already did it up here. Um, and and that's, that's why when it's in this form, polynomial times natural log of x, it is integration by parts. It's not, not a u sub. <coughs> But usually, like usually the form that I give it in is, is x to the fourth times natural log of x because it's a little bit clearer um, than, than this where it's on the bottom. And then yeah, right. you carry this through, you get minus one over nine, x to the minus three, and you get, you know, other stuff here, plus c, okay. All right, so you just your your structure just like transitions hard into indefinite integrals. And it's indefinite because of the bounds. Indefinite. It's um that's the giveaway. Okay. Now if it was just the integral two x e to the minus x squared dx what what technique do you see as maybe being a an approach here um, well <laughs> i see integration by parts again but i don't think that would be the best idea so, so do you see though that the derivative of minus x squared is 2x. Um, yes. So that would be so u sub again. Good. It'd be u sub, yeah. So let's let's just do that off the side. You're just so you can you know you again you can see it's u is minus x squared, du is minus 2x dx. So it becomes the integral 2x e to the u du over minus 2x. And then you can see this this cancels into negative e to the u du. Right. Do you see that? Yeah. Because we're going to have to do that, OK? And that, that's an important skill here. So the way you break this up is it's the limit as b goes to infinity integral minus b to 0. 0 is usually your choice. Uh, uh, and then 2x e to the minus x squared dx. And then plus 
integral from zero to b, 2x e to the minus x squared dx. All right. Do you remember kind of breaking apart these integrals this way? Yes. Fantastic. So now the the reason we did all this stuff on the right is that like you have to do all the stuff on the right. And and like what is the antiderivative e to the u? Well it's it's e to the u. And there's this negative there. U is minus x squared. So it becomes minus minus e to the minus x squared, like that. That's your that's your antiderivative. So now that we have our antiderivative, it's the limit as b goes to infinity e to the minus x squared evaluated from minus b to zero plus uh, e to the minus x squared evaluated from zero to b. Do you follow how I did that? Yes. Great. Um, so now, now it's like, well, maybe you, you know what it is, but you, you should go limit B approaches infinity, e to the zero minus e to the minus b, and then similarly plus e to the minus b uh, minus e to the zero. And you're supposed to be like, okay, uh, that's one mm -hmm. uh, minus b minus infinity. Well, that's zero. That's zero minus one. So is e to the infinity zero? e to the minus infinity is zero. So what is e to the infinity, just infinity? Yes. OK. All right. Um, I was expecting this to equal to, I must have a sign error. Like this is supposed to be plus. What is that? Uh, well, the area of this thing is positive. No, it's not. I'm sorry. It does cancel out. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the graph of this thing, I believe it's, it's yeah, if this is your graph here, it's, it starts like that. And that's why it cancels out. Okay. So I guess it is zero. All right. Um, so good, good time to look at the, the next one here, 14. Okay. Uh, you, you can see where we, we would never, we would probably not be able to get through an entire review in one lesson. Right. So just keep that in mind for scheduling. Uh, and, and probably the best thing is to actually go through and rework some of these problems or rework others yeah. uh, so on. So this is, we kind of did a problem like this earlier. We did this problem where, where I said, oh yeah, you know, it's like number five uh, where it might have the appearance of being something more complicated than it actually is. It's really just x minus three to the fourth, but then you negate it because it moves it up and you're integrating that. Yeah. Oh no, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. That would be true if it were just an indefinite inter integral. This one, I'm sorry, this one is an improper because this thing right here is, does, uh, cannot equal zero at x equals three. So I, I'm, I'm wrong here. We have to break this up from, uh, zero to three, one is x to the minus three to the fourth, plus integral three to five, one over x minus three to the fourth. And then you do this, this, this b thing, you do the limit as b approaches three, and you, you change these bounds. Now, the antiderivative is, it is like this, it's minus four here, the mm -hmm. treat as minus four power, so it's minus one third, x minus three to the minus three power, but you, you evaluate from zero to b plus, same thing here, um, oops, minus one third, x minus three, minus three evaluated from b to five. And this time, this time, <laughs> let's see here. So you get minus one third, uh, one over b minus three, uh, and that that's a problem. 
uh, because you'll see your plus one third, one over zero minus three. You'll see that's a problem right here because as B approaches three, you get one over zero, which is undefined. So maybe, maybe category, if you're doing some quick studying today, you know, maybe categorize, okay, I want to get all my U subs, my integration, my parts, partial fractions, and improper integrals down. That might be mm -hmm. a, a good, good, good suggestion. So, okay. All right. Well, um, all I'm right. sure I'll see you again here soon. I'll send you the notes and be enjoy the rest of your day. All right. You too. Have a good one. Bye.